Bonds Secure is extremely grateful to all of our speakers who will be addressing the conference today, um, 15 in all. And I want to particularly thank those who've traveled uh, from overseas to be with us. Uh, and they are Professor Michael Brennan, Chuck Bacosta from UPMC, Paul Corrigan, Professor Patrick Jurison, Alan Manning, and Professor Brendan McCormick. Um, and they, like you, are all very welcome today. Today's conference is an opportunity to hear from our distinguished speakers, but it's also a chance for you to question them and to have discussions and to exchange ideas on what we think is a very timely topic of patience, partnerships, and planning. Now, we're particularly honored that Ambassador Kevin O'Malley has agreed to open our conference. Kevin O'Malley was sworn in as US Ambassador to Ireland on the 30th of September, 2014, and eight days later presented his credentials to President Michael D. Higgins. Ambassador O'Malley is a distinguished attorney. He was a partner in Greensfelder, Hemker and Gale in St. Louis, Missouri, where his trial skills earned him fellowship in the American College of Trial Lawyers. He's also been adjunct professor at both Washington University School of Law and St. Louis School of Law. He's nationally recognized as the author of a treatise on jury instructions that is used in federal jury trials throughout the United States. Now, before entering private practice, Ambassador O'Malley was an assistant US attorney in St. Louis and a special attorney in the organized crime section of the United States Department of Justice in Washington, Los Angeles, and Phoenix. During his tenure as a federal prosecutor, he received the Distinguished Service Award from the United States Attorney General. He was legal advisor for the Central and Eastern European Law Initiative, both in Moscow and in Warsaw. And in 2009, Ambassador O'Malley was appointed by the Missouri governor, Jay Nixon, to be the only non-physician on the Missouri Board of Registration for the Healing Arts, a medical licensing and disciplinary authority in that state. The physicians subsequently elected him as board president. Um, and Ambassador O'Malley has also served as an officer in the United States Army Reserve. Kevin O'Malley is known as a talented leader, expert manager, and a forthright public speaker, and he's been consistently chosen by the editors of the best lawyers in America for his work in medical negligence defense and white collar criminal defenses. Based on a career that has emphasized collegiality and common sense in litigation, he recently received the award of honor of the Lawyers Association of St. Louis recognition by plaintiff and defendant's attorneys of his ability to resolve conflicts in a courteous and professional manner. Ambassador O'Malley has strong Irish roots. Both of his parents were Irish and his paternal grandparents uh, emigrated from Westport County Mayo about 100 years ago. He held dual citizenship with Ireland and the United States until his confirmation process for the position he currently holds. Ambassador, we thank you again for being with us, and I now invite you to open our conference. Thank you very much and good morning. Uh, it is uh, a really a great honor for me to be here to um, open your conference and to be with so many great thought leaders. Uh, the title of your conference um, 
is really important to me and, and I know it is uh, to you and to the sponsors. Patience, partnership, and planning uh, in, these, in this particular era of such a challenging time in the healthcare industries uh, all over the world, um, patience, partnership, and planning uh, uh, is truly a, uh, a great goal and something to keep in mind. And I am confident from looking at the program that, that uh, you have today and the list of distinguished speakers and topics uh, that there will be some collaborations born out of this conference which will uh, hopefully bear fruit uh, in the coming years. The United States and Ireland have uh, share a long historical and familial ties that have now blossomed into a two-way uh, economic bridge uh, that has an investment relationship uh, worth over uh, almost $600 billion. What started out as a, uh, a relationship between uh, impoverished immigrants like my own grandparents um, has blossomed into something uh, that no one could have anticipated but from which we can all benefit. The original uh, relationship, um, again, like my own grandparents coming to um, emigrating from Ireland without, um, the Taoiseach actually gave me the original manifest from the ship that they were on, listing their name, my grandparents' names, and the seven aunts and uncles that were born here in Ireland. Uh, and they had $20 uh, to, their, to their name when they left. And the relationship was that if, few dollars would be sent back here to Ireland um, you know, every Christmas or around that time. And that relationship has changed dramatically. It is now a two-way street where 250 Irish companies are prospering uh, in the United States. Um, 700 American multinationals are prospering here in Ireland. Um, the investment, again, at, at about $600 billion. The, um, the relationship is a two-way street. Uh, currently, um, today, there are more uh, Americans working for Irish companies uh, in the United States than there are Irish people working for American companies in Ireland. Um, it, is, it is a different type of relationship. Uh, it's a wonderful relationship. It's, it, it, it has the best of both worlds. It has the, it has the familial, the cultural and now the economic. Um, and uh, your job here today, uh, my job, uh, is to make sure that that relationship uh, continues and blossoms and develops. Um, and as I'll talk about in a second, gets handed down to the very next generation of Irish and American leaders. But the medical technology sector, a, p a big part uh, of, uh, of that economic bridge now between the United States uh, and Ireland um, is, you know, concerns the world's top medical technology companies that are operating uh, here in Ireland and that started in the United States, companies like Boston Scientific and Visticon uh, that I have personally um, been to and inspected and walked through during my time here in Ireland. They are presenting unique opportunities where innovation uh, is mixed with the great uh, Irish talents that are here, building state-of-the-art devices and, uh, and coming up with healthcare solutions which will benefit people uh, all over the world. The United States and Ireland healthcare connection is also evident right here uh, through the history of collaborations of world-class organizations like the Cleveland Clinic, like the Mayo Clinic, uh, and recently the UPMC partnership with Bon Secours to establish a radiotherapy center uh, in Cork. These joint ventures uh, inspire us. These joint ventures demonstrate how partnerships uh, can generate real success and how particularly partnerships between the United States and Ireland are at the forefront uh, of healthcare discoveries. We've watched Irish companies um, 
like Cragana Medical, which started, is, as you know, as a very small company in Galway in 1979, grow its footprint in the United States and now operate a network uh, which spans four continents. Um, we've watched with interest new companies emerging from Ireland, breaking through, working with universities, um, working with other healthcare providers uh, to really establish uh, a beachhead for progress and development in this area. Some of, you have, some of you may have heard of our Creative Minds program uh, at the embassy. We, are, we developed a, a program that which we started last year in order to find a way to make sure that the relationship that currently exists between the United States and Ireland gets handed down to the next generation of Irish and American leaders. Your country is changing. Uh, Ireland, Ireland is changing demographically. Uh, one in six people born in Ireland aren't Irish. Um, you're not, you don't have emigration the way you had before. Um, for example, when I, I grew up in the United States not thinking of Ireland uh, as a foreign country, um, I was not a particularly um, inquisitive uh, kid, uh, but I was always asking my grandparents about Ireland because they talked funny. They didn't talk like the other grandparents uh, in the neighborhood, and I wanted to know why that was. So as I grew up, I didn't think of Ireland as some distant place way across uh, the ocean. It was, it was just kind of who we all were. And many people of my generation grew up that way, but that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, and as the generations continue, uh, that will become a less and less of, of a tie. Um, as Ireland open up, opens up its markets in places like China, for example, as it should, as it must, um, uh, there'll be markets well past the United States that China will be interested in. We have, uh, as you know, 11 million uh, undocumented Hispanics, <clears throat> excuse me, living in the United States that are going to continue to live in the United States. They're not going to be deported. Um, those people will be assimilated in our society just as the Irish were assimilated. Um, they are productive, hardworking, uh, religious, family people. Um, but it's going to change how it's going to change how we look at things. So Creative Minds is is a way um, that we are trying to connect the next generation. So the, the younger people are interested in music. They're interested in culture. They're interested in technology. They're interested in entrepreneurism. They're interested in startups. And so Creative Minds is bringing uh, the, the richest talent that we can get uh, from the United States to come uh, to Ireland to put on programs, demonstrations, lectures, uh, master classes uh, to, for, the, for the kind of subjects that the young Irish are interested in whether that be music, whether that be animation, whether that be medicine, um, whether that be technology, that is what we are trying to do uh, with this series. So during the Creative Minds series, we've put on about 20 programs now in the last uh, year and a half. Uh, we've had two standout events which showcased medical research and medical innovation. Uh, we were very fortunate to have a representative from uh, Sloan Kettering uh, in, in New York along with leading researchers from the UK's um, NHS and from the Royal College of Surgeons Ireland provide insight uh, in research of various forms of head and neck cancers. Um, we had people come in to talk uh, about mm -hmm. collaborations that existed between, that already existed between the United States and Ireland uh, in, in, this, in this disease. We, we talked about what we could do in the future, working together uh, in order to make some progress. Since we've had, we've had progress in the United States that head and neck cancers have decreased since the year 2001, and what could we do together uh, here in, in Ireland and the United States to further the progress that we made? And it's not only the collaborations uh, across disciplines, but also across national lines uh, that can be important and, and that can make a difference. Another event that we hosted, for example, was called Wire for Sound, Treating Deafness with Cochlear Implants. Um, 
we brought together world-class researchers from Vanderbilt University and the Vanderbilt Institute of Surgery and Engineering, Beaumont Hospital, the Royal College of Surgeons, and Trinity College. So these kinds of collaborations, at, like the one that we're having here today, can continue to inspire and to connect and to engage uh, our shared values mm -hmm. and our shared communities and our shared responsibilities to make it all a better place to live. Continued cooperation and investment in our people, in our talents, in our ideas, in our research, beyond our own shores, cements the connection between the United States and Ireland and the rest of the world. One of the great things about being the United States Ambassador to Ireland, and there are many great things I could put on the list, uh, I get to talk to many, many, many visitors uh, that I have welcomed um, here to Ireland from the United States. Two business delegations from my own hometown of St. Louis, Missouri, for example. An organization called Global STL, or Global St. Louis, is building a leading, is a leading center for bioscience research and commercialization that has a vibrant entrepreneurial startup community uh, surrounding it. And that has been established now in Galway um, to, to further the bioscience research and the bioscience entrepreneurship uh, that exists. In, partner with, uh, in partnership with Enterprise Ireland Global St. Louis uh, has been identifying Irish companies that would benefit from the St. Louis corporate and innovation ecosystems. And that's just one example of literally hundreds that exist uh, between the United States and Ireland today uh, just in your space, just in the, in the medical space. Opportunities for collaboration between our two countries are endless. <clears throat> Take, for example, the United States Department of Commerce-led initiative, which is promoting Irish companies' expertise in the smart cities arena, especially in e-health. Uh, here we have started a conversation of how the United States can engage with Ireland and with Europe in general to find and promote smart city solutions that can be scalable, replicable and efficient. A smart city requires smart and connected healthcare systems, and I know where all of you come into the picture uh, on that. Our two countries share the will to make the world a better place where people enjoy health and long, long lives. Children born today may never actually drive a car or may never actually hold a newspaper in their hands. It's likely if your date of birth is October the 26th, 2016, you will live well past the age of 100. Today you will hear from people will, that will help you make that happen for future generations. Creative thinkers that will, through the use of technology and smart collaborations and smart international collaborations, will make our healthcare system stronger more connected and more efficient with the result of generating better and longer lasting and longer lasting good outcomes for patients in Ireland, for patients in the United States, and for patients everywhere. I hope, I sincerely hope, that the collaborations that you have today, that you will make today, or that you will deepen today will continue to inspire, uh, to, to connect, and to engage our shared global communities long after your work here in this important conference has concluded. Good luck to you on that. God bless you all. <laughs>